it is found that you have concealed some income that there is a penalty and the penalty is 200% of that tax evaded hi everyone you're watching invest smart a show where we talk about all things related to your money your savings and your investments i'm abhi raja now this is a time when many are rushing to file their income tax returns there can be a lot of confusion at times a certain confusion needs to be cleared up and that's what we're going to attempt to do today and answer all your questions related to filing your income tax returns to do that joining me is pankaj matpal pankaj thank you so much for joining us here on the show let me start off with one of the biggest points of confusion which is which form to use now very often uh, there is confusion regarding this wrong forms get filled and then there is a flurry to try and rectify that mistake uh, can you just break it down for our viewers thank you avni for having me on the show um see definitely because now the time has come individuals are filing their itr returns and there are several forms uh, itr 1 to itr 7 so right form has to be selected but it's not difficult because if you talk about individuals uh, for them four forms are applicable itr 1 itr 2 itr 3 or itr 4 out of that we talk about the salaried individuals so for salaried individuals itr 1 or itr 2 will be applicable and if you have income from business or profession because many individuals uh, they work at, uh, under retainership they are they may be getting a fixed income every month but they are not in employment or an individual may have uh, some other professional income in such case itr 3 or itr 4 may be applicable so let's talk about itr 1 and itr 2 first so for salaried individuals if your income is up to rupees 50 lakh um, you do not have income from capital gains your income is only from uh, salary or pension or income from other source for example bank interest etc and you do not have income from more than one house property and you are resident individual then only itr 1 will be applicable otherwise even if you are a salaried individual but you have some income from capital gains or loss even in that case or you have more than one house and income from those houses or your income is from salary only but it is more than rupees 50 lakh for the financial year 22 23 in such case you will have to file itr 2 so at least for itr 1 and itr 2 i have clarified and i'll tell about itr 3 itr 4 also if uh, you give me permission yes please go ahead okay so as i said for salaried individual itr 1 and 2 are applicable now as i said there are many individuals who work as a consultant or they may have a small business so if the income is from business or profession then itr 3 or itr 4 will be applicable now itr 4 which is also called sugam individuals who have income below 50 lakh resident individuals and uh, they do not have income from capital gains they can file their income in itr 4 but if you have income above 50 lakh rupees or you are non resident individual or you have income from capital gains also because it is very important to mention these days uh, almost everybody Uh, like to invest in mutual funds or shares then yeah. uh, they may have some capital loss or gains in such case you have to be very careful that uh, a different itr form will be applicable as i said for salary individual otherwise itr 1 could be possible but if you have income from capital gains then itr 2 you have to file similarly if you are a, uh, if you have income from business or profession you could file your itr in itr 3 itr 4 but if you have income from capital gains then itr 4 will be applicable so you have to be very careful but the good part is if you see the itr form it is on the top of that clearly mentioned that that form is applicable for which kind of income so if you read that before filing you can make the right choice 
Yes, absolutely. I think uh, that's a very uh, nicely explained as to which ITR form uh, one needs to use. Uh, moving on, Pankaj, let's talk about Form 16, because as we know, for salaried people, Form 16 uh, is something that's a basic requirement to file returns. But is it possible to file returns for any reason if you don't have Form 16? See, for IT, for, for salaried individual, IT uh, Form 16 is applicable. And for uh, individuals who have income from business or profession, who work as a consultant, they get Form 16A. So let's talk about Form 16 first for the salary individual. Practically, it is not possible to file ITR without Form 16. The reason is, though your all deductions are available in uh, AIS, Annual Income Statement, and uh, in Form 26 AS. But the reason why I said that Form 16 is mandatory, because in Form 16, you get the bifurcation of your all uh, uh, payments. So some amount may be taxable, some are not taxable. So to fill the amounts in the right column and in correct way, it is important that you should have Form 16. In absence of Form 16, you will come to know that what is your total uh, intake. But the thing is that if you do not put the amount in the right columns, there are chances that your tax liability will go up. That is why because as a salary individual, your income tax is deducted by your employer. And when you file ITR, there should not be any additional tax liability until unless you have additional income. But if you do not have information of the deductions and different heads, there are chances that you may end up paying higher tax. So that is why Form 16 is important for you. Yes, absolutely. Now, just taking that point forward in terms of, you know, if there is any kind of an error, if there is an incomplete disclosure, you know, what are the kind of most common mistakes that you've seen people make, which can be avoided and how can they be rectified? See, mistake usually, uh, one thing is that because of negligence or maybe willful also, sometimes income is not disclosed. So, concealing of income is a uh, here offense which can attract penalty so that is why when you file your itr first thing is that your form 16 your bank statement your all investment proof should be in your hand it may happen that you have given your all investment proof to your employer but still there may be some mistake which has not been incorporated in form 16 so once you have that uh, in your hand you can check it it may also happen that you submitted your investment proof in the month of January or December to your employer, but you made more investments, eligible investments for claiming deduction later, which have not come in your form 16. So that while filing ITR, you can claim bank interest. Your employer will not know about that, but you have to report it and it may mm. be taxable as well. So from form 16, you can check what is your uh, total interest earned in the year and you have to report it. Apart from that, when you go through your AIS, annual income statement, you will come to know uh, whether you have sold some shares, you have sold uh, your mutual funds, all information will be available there. So you have to report it. Sometimes what happens, you just copy paste your form 16 and do not report your other incomes. In that case, there are chances you'll get notice. And if your income means it is found that you have concealed some income, that there is a penalty and the penalty is 200% of that tax evaded. So that is why you should be careful that uh, whatever additional even tax needs to be paid, you should pay while filing ITR. Otherwise, later it may be problematic for you. Yes, uh, absolutely. That's a very important point in terms of ensuring that you've disclosed income from everywhere, irrespective of what's taxable, what's not, uh, to avoid extra penalties. Uh, Pankaj, the other question, the other point really is also that uh, the filing of ITR now becomes that much more important because you also have to choose uh, which tax regime you want to opt for. Uh, you know, otherwise your new tax regime becomes uh, uh, the default tax regime. So this is also the important uh, time when you will choose what tax regime you want to go in for. Uh, this is very, very important. Let me clarify for salary individual. Uh, they have choice to uh, change the this uh, regime. Miss, for example, somebody 
has uh, chosen this year uh, old tax regime or last year they chose uh, old tax this year they want to go for a new tax regime it is possible so every year even they can change change it as of now the government uh, says that uh, it is allowed for salaried individuals though for uh, other individuals it is only once in a lifetime now the important point is maybe while you submitted your declaration to your employer as an employee uh, you may have chosen one maybe that old or new tax regime but later you realized that another one is better for you so while filing itr you can change it easily means whichever option you take now that will be the final for your tax calculation so if for example initially you thought that you will not make any investment for uh, tax deduction or you will not uh, have home loan and you thought that i uh, that uh, new tax regime will be more suitable for you but later you uh, took a loan you made investment for tax saving and you realized that employer has deducted more than the required because uh, you chose the incorrect tax regime or which is not more suitable for you so now when you file itr you take the right decision and whatever the extra tax has been deducted you will get refund of that right um the other question i had was uh, with regard to you know virtual digital assets or cryptos because there is still confusion about uh, how to go about declaring the income that if you have any from that uh, what uh, would uh, what do people need to know that is mentioned in your itr form itself now so any uh, digital means uh, uh, this uh, digital currency uh, that is taxable at the highest rate so that column is available there you have to report and automatically your system will calculate that so for example um, what happens when you uh, buy shares you sell share when you sell shares i mean so there may be long term short term capital gains applicable when you are you have income from salary there also based on the slab your tax is calculated but here for this cryptocurrency whatever that uh, income that will be taxable at the highest rate same as it is applicable for winning from horse race or lottery income in lottery income or horse race the same rule is applicable and same is applicable for this cryptocurrency as well and uh, one final question uh, pankaj if anybody fails to uh, you know meet the deadline or for whatever reason has not filed their income tax returns in the last couple of years uh, what are the kind of penalties what are the kind of repercussions uh, for such scenarios see for the previous years you cannot file itr now so that uh, deadline is already over till 31st of march uh, 2023 you could file for the previous financial year but now for if you are talking about the financial year 2022 23 uh, you can file itr for that only and for salaried individual the due date is 31st july until unless government extends that so you have to file itr before this if you miss that date though it is not appropriate to say right now because you have time so there is no chance to miss but in case any individual is not able to file they can still file after that but there is a penalty of rupees 5000 uh for that and they can file up to 31st march of the subsequent uh, financial subsequent year means in 2024 31st march 2024 they can file but uh, many benefits you may lose so right now because we are doing show at such time there is no uh, reason to say that uh, you will miss it so file your itr on time before 31st july and report all the important uh, things even your income from house property maybe that uh, rent etc which is not known to your employer you must report it and report it correctly file on time and uh, it is not only the tax but that itr is required for many other things also yes absolutely yeah. pankaj uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us and breaking that down uh, for us and like you said uh, let's hope that uh, you know everyone who sees this at least goes ahead and files their income tax uh, returns on time without doing that last minute rush where you know a lot of mistakes can happen and unnecessary penalties will have to be paid Uh, for our viewers we hope this show has helped you in case you have any kind of questions regarding either this topic or anything related to your personal finance or your savings uh, the scroll is running at the bottom you can email us on investsmart@editorg.com
Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.